So hello and welcome to the Mundane to Magical Online Summit. My name is Louise Matson, and I am truly blessed to be your host. This summit has been created to assist people to shift their lives from the mundane to the magical. And my vision was to assist people to reconnect with and reclaim the truth of who we all truly are as multidimensional spiritual beings and gain insights on how to manifest our soul-fueled magical lives. And today I'm really excited and honoured to welcome Karen Oratari to the show. Karen Orr is a gifted intuitive healer, spiritual teacher and visionary artist. She's a 24th generation healer in an unbroken lineage of Mayan Kurunderos, a minister and instructor of divine intervention, uh, dimensional mastery teacher and a light language master. Karenor has had the honor of learning from several masters and miracle workers and is a protege of world-renowned master healer, Star Fuentes. Karenor leads transformational retreats and workshops worldwide and at the Saranda Center Brazil, and combines contemporary mysticism with powerful ancient healing modalities. She facilitates remarkable empowering transformations, inspires and activates shifts in consciousness for her clients and students, and is known for her special talents and success in healing and manifestation of soulmate relationships. And what a perfect conversation to be having on Valentine's Day, which is when we're recording this. So it's my absolute pleasure and honor to welcome you to the show, Karen. Thank you. Thank you for for creating this this, uh, wonderful opportunity to, to share. And also thank you for inviting me. No, it's 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 lovely to have you on. Um, I connected with your energy on another summit that was done and uh, you just radiated through the screen. And because this summit for me has been completely spirit driven, I just completely trusted my instincts. And uh, I know that, well, it fits completely that you're here being interviewed on Valentine's Day and there is so much love radiating from you. It's just a wonderful thing to experience. So it's perfect for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I it's, it's really day. yeah, yeah, because I was I was really driven like after after talking with you to to like to explore the the issue of self love and and today's Valentine Day is like. It looks like a divine inspiration, right? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, completely. Um, so before we we do that, before we explore more into self love, which I do believe is is a really important message, especially on this day more than ever. Um, if you could just share a, a bit about your journey of um, you know spiritual awakening, spiritual development, you know. Um, you obviously have a very long um, history with with um, your own personal development and, and embodying and, and empowering others. But if you could just share a bit about um, where you're coming from and the kind of work that you do, that would be fantastic. Okay, yes, sure. Mm. Well, it's, it's somehow like... Um, as as more as I evolve, it's hard to look at the time as like a past, present, uh, future, just like the, the horizontal, because you start the understanding like the circular time, and and it's quite quite uh, amusing when when uh, I meet people and and we say like, oh no, it looks like we look. We, we know each other and sometimes we talk about ah yeah probably like past life it looks like you're we're sisters or something and and it's really really something like that that uh, I woke up this morning like thinking about it that how like spirit more and more people that in the spiritual uh, journey meeting each other the time is is really different and the conversation that we have that sounds like a little bit strange for people that still in in the matrix yeah. right thank god for the movie matrix we got we got to really understand a little bit like what it means to be in the third uh dimension and like really like moving <clears throat> from your own story to a place where you are in service for all this uh beautiful game of co-creating yeah. our evolution and and uh, and really discovering our truth. 
Uh, so it's it's um, <clears throat> a little complicated to like pin a point where where it all started and and I have like a lot of, a lot of stories how I I evolved from like the person uh, where that uh, Karen Orr, uh born in Israel growing up there and all her life experiences and then traveling in the world and and start discovering. Uh, um, like things that out of the box, you know, mm-hmm. getting out of the normal patterns of living, and and uh, <clears throat> I guess through through like uh, in a lot of inspiration through reading books and and yoga practices and kind of shamanic uh, explorations through sweat lodge and mm-hmm. you know like uh, Native American uh, practices and start like opening for me new new words and through there i start exploring the the word that means healing before healing was you know something yeah something like very far it was just something you naturally you heal you hurt yourself you heal you know you don't <clears throat> i didn't think about like a like a deep deep inner journey of like uh exploring the patterns <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, the patterns that that create in our uh, our life experiences, yeah. and yeah, and I, I guess like my my life pushed me from like like uh, exploration through Reiki, understanding like the energy and chi, and going through the hands and to the mm-hmm. body, and then uh, something like deeper through like. Uh, soul retrievals and understanding that different traumas in our lives we get disconnected and dis- disconnected from our soul and then like really expl- exploring what what it means to have a soul or a, my soul that have a body yeah. and what does it mean that i'm disconnected and and to feel that connection uh, uh, again it's it was really like bringing me to the place where I'm, like um uh a feeling of inner peace you know yeah. that like that inner peace where nobody can can give you is nothing about like uh just like inspiration or outside is something interior mm-hmm. and when you feel it then then you know something else like you know you know deep inside of you of, of like uh, of secrets that exist that you you know your mind don't grasp but mm-hmm. you know that there exists and there's there's more ways to explore it and it's like a mandala it keeps like more and more opening to uh, a mandala like you know like I'm a painter so yeah. like for me yeah. if I paint a mandala I start from the center and then like I in the center have something and then like I I bring more shapes and more shapes and more shapes and then it evolved to like something else and this is what I feel like life is is happening because it started from something and then um uh like in sacred geometry i also work with sacred geometry the like icosahedron it has like 20 sides so it's like ex- exploding like you, you explore one area and you start like you know evolving in other areas so i feel like um i don't know it, i probably was really um all over just like trying like just from your question, I feel like I'm, I got like a little bit like all over the place. So um, yeah, let's go back to focus. <laughs> Maybe you're asking me something else. <laughs> but it is like that though, isn't it? And I know everybody's journey is different, but it's never a straight line. It, 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 it is like a wormhole that takes you. You explore one route and that expands into something else beautiful and then you're drawn to something else and it expands even further. And it's like this forever unfurling flower that you kind of expanding into more and more with um, when, when you're ready, when the time is right for you to take on and unlock that other piece of wisdom within you and go deeper and wider and into the true aspects of, of who we are. But like you say, that bringing it into that experience of of embodying that aspect within ourselves and only then really can we kind of begin to understand the the disconnect that took place 
because it's one thing to to grasp it from a cognitive level purely in the mind but it's something completely different to actually experience that stillness that inner peace when we we do reconnect with our truth and our highest aspect of self within us <laughs> yes there's there's something like um about remembering and forgetting that it, they keep they keep continuing, you know, through our journey. Because like we remember and inspire us, and we go in from there, and then and then we we forget again. So it's like it's something about like uh, like to understand like everything there have waves, mm -hmm. and to really respect these waves. Like the moon, you know, like sometimes there's the new moon and then the full moon and then the time when we shine and the time when we, we compress. And, and you're starting being like more, more natural, you know, when you connect to yourself. Yeah. You connect more to yourself and you understand that you are also part of the waves and your emotions are part, part of the waves. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, and, and to respect that, that, you know, maybe you understand what it means to have high vibration and positive and like go and surfing on the high waves and you know that these high waves naturally go so maybe they don't go that low and they don't stay low for a long time mm -hmm. but like you you learn like you learn like that how everything is is flowing mm -hmm. how like nature i mean we are nature and we are like breathing with nature and nature is keep growing and keep evolving and 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 uh and there's there's a certain rhythm, and we also have certain rhythm, and and really like to start exploring ourselves and 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 be more conscious of how we work. This is some a journey that I feel that is is uh, I have like a lot of enthusiastic about it. It's really fascinating because we we don't stop. Like you know, it's it's a breathing thing. Is like we are breathing, life is breathing, and we understand that like we are part of it, you know. And and um, on this journey, there's there's a lot of things, and I think like um, working with understanding more how also our, our mind work and be more compassionate about it, mm -hmm. because naturally, like like it likes to compare and to judge. And and part of like the like my own evolution is is really get inspiration with 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 things that like uh, keep evolving. Everyone keep evolving. So then then we cannot judge. If we judge, we are stopping things. I mean, this is it. You know, we put things inside a cube. That's it. And <laughs> and when when we stop judging, we understand things are evolving. And for me, for me, like. Um, to be a teacher, this is like uh, the highest frequency that I feel that I can evolve because is is like I'm I'm learning by myself and from there, like my heart is telling me to give, to share, to yeah. to explore more and and to give more and 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 to have the responsibility also to uh, uh, to be more authentic teacher. That means like to really explore who I am and and to. To continue uh, sharing, not sharing only my own experiences, but like you know, whatever comes through me. And uh, let me tell a little bit about what what uh, I know that come through me, because sometimes we don't even know. There's so many like so many uh, uh, spiritual realms that some of them we know, some of them we don't know, and it's it's pretty fascinating. Mm. And in my exploration. Through my healing journey, I met um, I met certain teachings that come from the Mayan and the Coranderos of uh, Mexico. That they are the Ma Mayan tribe, and they keep these teachings. and They teach about they teach about dimensions. They teach about light language and through sacred geometry and color and the codes of energy. Because uh, you know, like. When we start really exploring everything, when think, we understand everything is energy, and everything like you know have like a certain information in it. Every cell, every atom, like if it's plants, if it's cells in in our body, in 
in the universe, in micro, macro. So like when you're really exploring these codes, um, they have like a shape and they have a form. Mm. When you understand them, you can actually like, you can read better the language of consciousness and you can also participate in this, uh, um, uh, in this game of co-creating. I mean, everyone participating, but really participating consciously mm -hmm. in a positive way and be part of the of like a, a huge constellation of, of uh, you know of spirit guides, of angels, of uh, masters, and and like galactic beings. Or whatever. like, there's a huge like uh, play that that help in the evolution. And not only the evolution of our planet. I mean, it it, it grows in into the universe and universes. So so um, it's not about like my mind really trying to grasp all, but it's just to understand that like there's more, and whatever it grasps, you know, it, it process and um, and working on also with the mind because not only the mind is is you know is the heart and is the and and there's like there's a whole like system that people already learned about like the solo bodies and like everything how um how consciousness works through through our bodies and how we develop and um yeah i don't know how i got to, to all of this but it looks like there's something that is really calling for this knowledge and and uh just to trust that you are part of the game is is a big thing for me, you know. Just re and, and and you know, if I'm working on myself and in my own integrity, I feel whatever is coming is is pure, and I can trust it. And then my work as as a person who know, because each person have their own psychic uh, gift. Mm -hmm. Some people are visionaries. Some people are auditory. Some people are feelers. Some people are knowers. Uh, uh, a person who who is knowing, he just knows. Like there's no like a process to it, and and there's something like a little bit complicated because like you don't have a proof. You just know. Yeah. <laughs> so your work is to trust yourself. <laughs> you know, trust yourself hundred percent. I know that that's that's is my work all the time. And as much as I'm, I'm purifying, purifying the, the vessel, I can trust more and more and relax into it that whatever is coming is exactly what needs to come and play with that. So, like, you know, there's a lot of things about being a teacher and give, and, and I feel like also what is important is how to connect to people. Mm -hmm. And and i feel like uh, joy is humor and humor are really like amazing amazing tools that that you know god divine and like give give us as as like a tool in this uh, human experience and um yeah and i feel like like the people who i know that normally like attract to me they come they come because of that because they can feel the love they can feel the joy and and the priority of like being in that vibration while really respecting that when you are not that that's okay and give space for it so you, it can like really transform because if we re repress it we don't you know yeah just absolutely. stay there like yeah yeah and and that's really i mean a, a big part of the acceleration of my journey was very much around self love very much around that that self acceptance you know, all of those bits that, that I may have buried deep within myself or been ashamed of or been fearful of or, you know, wasn't um, socially acceptable in, in a way, you know, things like anger and and all of those things. It's like just being able to kind of go there and completely accept who I was in my entirety and love every aspect of that um, just kind of released so much um that it did make space to enable me to trust myself because I'm a, a knower as well and one of the things was that I didn't I didn't trust the the sense of knowing that I had until I'd really kind of trusted myself I guess in a way um, and really got to know myself yeah. fully yeah 
Yeah, trust trusting yourself is a big gift for for self love and respecting ourselves and and there's many many aspects that really help in self love and self love is something that I feel is one of the priorities that that people can have because like it's most of the people that I know is easier for them to think about other people and to love other people and understand other people and they forget themselves on the way or they think is selfish. Mm. You know, this is like a little tricky I found with with a lot of um a lot of people that you feel like it's really egoistic to love yourself mm. or to think about yourself first. And and I know this is probably a fine line between like, you know, being like an uh, egoistic person that just think about themselves and person who just say like no because they love themselves and they have to think about themselves first. Mm. And uh you know, is is basic because if you don't love yourself the love you have for others is um you know can be is not enough it mm. can be much it can be flow flowing more and transform more because love is really powerful mm. and if you love yourself you can you can like uh you can really love others you can really find that that like diamond in like every relationship and and uh and and yeah so like what you can say about self-love how can you how you can get like for you like how what was the tools you got like self-love for example for me it was around um uh, well initially i went through forgiveness so um it happened my, my acceleration happened after the death of my parents and a lot of my denying my truth was around um how my parents perceived my gifts and the fear that they instilled in me and so i locked everything away um through a lot of fear and so when they died it was initially around forgiveness work with them but then it turned into forgiveness of me because obviously as you go through the forgiveness process for somebody else or a situation, you realize ultimately, you know, you take responsibility for the choices and things that you make. So then it turned from forgiveness work into completely accepting. And that also in, uh, came about because I was in Colombia um, with a shaman in Colombia and I very strongly got the message to love all of myself you know, all aspects of myself. Um, and so I really kind of went down that route and really explored that quite deeply and, and realized how much of myself um, I had hidden, uh, you know, even from, from me that I didn't want to go near. I, I'd, I'd fed the, the aspects that I saw as negative because I feared them and I didn't want to, you know, shine any light on them to go near them. And it was only when I did a lot of the shadow work that I kind of truly got to that place of inner stillness um, and, and actually completely loving and accepting myself in all, you know, my, my different aspects. Um, and, and that's how I then kind of came to experience and understand fully kind of what self-love really is and how essential that is to our process of of development, personal development, spiritual development, and our ability then to give freely to others and unconditionally, because like you say, unless you've done that work, it's all conditional. It's all based on something that you feel is lacking within you that you're seeking from another or, you know, it's, it's very much in a box with limits on, on how much it is and how free it is. Yes. Right, and and um, there's something about about the the topic of judgment that I think is is like one key to to continue working on self love because when we say self love to a person, it's like yeah okay you know and I love myself and then I look at the mirror and I love what I see and and sometimes they don't even know how to start and and I say like okay look in the mirror and loving what you see is, is a good start. Okay. <laughs> because like, there's so many people who look in the mirror and they just look in and at the, 
defects, you know, like it's, it's superficial, but it's still like, this is self-love, whatever it is. I mean, this is the form your soul chose, like respect that, you chose that, have responsibility for that. And then we keep judging. We keep judging ourselves or in our thoughts and our behaviors and and the judgment sometimes is so fast that we don't even notice. It's just like it's just their part of our system. Mm. So just slowing down and like taking deep breath and, and like watching. Like meditation, I think, is like part essential if in, in people's growing. And I know some people have resistance with this because it's some something for you know, from the Far East or, or like just far spiritual thing that we don't want to go into it. And like, you know, each person really needs to find a way how to stop, how to stop and, and to view. Like mm -hmm. if, if it's something you need to do, exercise, yoga, whatever, to mm -hmm. like to be by yourself and, and to view your your own system and how you work. And, and something is really surprising uh, shocking to understand how much we judge ourselves. Yeah. And even, even, and then to love that part we judge because that judge, it, it, it looks for, for, looks for love. That judge wants to be love. Mm -hmm. And you say like, and you just keep judging the place with, when you think like, oh, this, nobody will love this part. Nobody will love. Oh, maybe we should hide that part because oh, I'm so embarrassed about that one. So like, to understand that the whole system just need to be loved or just want to be loved. And this is what everyone wants with, with whatever attention they want to get through like, you know, uh, through all the selfie or, you know, it's just like, like attention to be loved. Everyone basically, I think it's, it's really cute. It's really sweet. It's really something uh, uh, extraordinarily and simple in a way like because like children i have i have uh two daughters myself one is 18 today and uh, the other one is nine and and i see i see them through they grow and it really really remind me myself as a child mm -hmm. like you know when whatever you're doing you just want to be loved and accepted and and uh there's always the fear that like you will not be that that you will be judged for what you did wrong or whatever so like we grow in like this and as adults we have the same thing yeah. like like in, in social encounters and sometimes we get like so many layers around it that we cannot see that it at the end what is inside is that the child that mm -hmm. want to be loved yeah so that's that's like a journey in in healing when when I get in myself and get with other people, I always encourage uh, encourage them to meet that child. Mm. And it doesn't matter if your parents were good with you or not. Like you can you can parent that child as adult conscious adult. It's time for you to be the parent for your child because it's still living inside of you. Yeah. It's not like like. I remember I was talking about past, present, and future and how, like, if you really understand that it's in a spiral, so it's there. I mean, it's part of your system, the child. It's mm -hmm. not something that belongs to the past, gone, and, and, and never again, and that's it. I mean, like, this life, life is, is uh, life has really different meaning if you think about, like, really in a flat way, and, and we, we're born, and then we do things, and then we die, you know? And and then you don't understand how you know so many things, right? Because yeah. we know it from because we have, we have so many lives, you know. I mean, you can call it past lives. We can have like a multi-dimensional view of things, or parallel universes, and, and, and knowledge coming because like we we don't really lose what we know, yeah. what we learn, and and so like back back to like the the issue of healing like when i sit with a person before they start exploring anything about about consciousness i think it's really exploring how like how they how they move how they the movement inside themselves how they think something you're not even like aware of your thoughts they're just like flying there so quickly and and is is just something that you used to and you kind of feel like you're a victim to it 
and or in, in some schools you even like trying to like reject it and ignore it with without understanding that this is like actually just a reflection of your system and if you can look at it you can understand what is inside and start heal it start like giving it love and attention because that child is there the child wants attention the child would love the just wants to be like acknowledge and and to say like it's okay you know uh, I know it's broken but yeah you had fun <laughs> you know that's that's okay you're exploring you're adventurous or whatever you're sweet you're gentle each person have their their qualities and um, we don't really touch our qualities if we don't connect to that inner child and, and give it the attention it needs you know how many adults like like we meet that talks like children? Like suddenly they talk and you, you hear a child coming out of their mouth. Yeah. And because the child is there. I mean, we really have to acknowledge that our child is, is living inside of that all the time. And sometimes is like, is miserable. You know, sometimes it, never, it was abused and never being able to play and or it doesn't even know to be joyful. And it, we just really need to like give it a lot of love and hug and, and like you know and that when that child start receiving it it doesn't matter which age mm -hmm. things start unfold and consciousness can be born to you know to that to this multi-dimensional reality that uh, that we know that is exist absolutely i mean i remember <clears throat> years ago i can't even remember but it, decades ago I I had the realization that there's no such thing as an adult really we're just we're still children just playing in a different playground but we've we've taken all of those wounds and everything that we had as children and we've just transported it into this this wider world where um you know things have probably greater consequences but yeah I mean I realized I had built so many walls around my heart um walls of protection as I saw them but you know it was that child not wanting to get hurt that child being fearful and, and just building more and more walls up and you know people can't can't hurt me if they can't get to me kind of thing um, but the realization that actually that was what was stopping me connecting with my truth connecting with um, that beautiful higher aspect of myself because I was caged I had caged myself in this um this prison really um where I saw myself as safe but really I wasn't allowing myself to actually experience life fully um because we you know we we one thing that I have learned on this journey it is about experiencing all aspects of life and we can only do that when we free ourselves to do that. And when we are fearful of something, of not being hurt or whatever, we don't take the risks, as it were. But a, a having an open heart to me is, is being guided by something and, and taking that leap of faith and experiencing it. And, and even if it's a challenging experience, you know, loving that because of the gifts that you get from that experience rather than perceiving it in a completely negative light. And that, that's been a, an important aspect of my journey for sure. Yes, absolutely. And, and like also what I see from like what you tell me is it's remind me that it's not only um, like this understanding, like, of what we are actually creating to ourselves, and that fear that we, we look at it as protection that actually at, the, at one point is just like a, is like a barrier for, for mm -hmm. evolution. And really understanding that, I mean, it's whatever story we have is our responsibility and we chose it. Yeah. And that's really empowering to understand that we chose that these parents that when we will not even understand how to see us, and uh, we chose uh, we chose a child that will choose to do all these barriers because afterwards it's really important for our growth to learn about about uh, self value, about courage, about self love, about uh, exploration of the, of the self. So like like sometimes it is a is a soul contract. 
the soul journey is a contract. It comes because like the soul say, for my evolution, I have to learn a few things. Mm-hmm. And I have to learn probably about this kind of relationship. I have to learn about, uh, in my case, okay, motherhood. I have to learn about, about self-love and self-value and about uh, service. And okay, so what kind of person can... T- I choose to be in order to evolve in a person that can learn all of that. And then we have life experiences that we create in to in order to get it. So so this is where again judgment come into play and to say like okay that was painful this is hard this is easy this is like you know at the end it doesn't make sense it's like what what it does like all these life experiences they come to to give us a certain lesson. Yeah. And the only thing, if we don't, we don't get it, then it, it can get more painful. So we will, we'll pay attention more, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really wild. It's like, like the body's talking to us and it's like, ah, like, you know, imagine the body's tired. It's like, oh, I'm tired. Let's go to sleep. It's like, no, there's a party. Let's do this and this and this. And uh, it's like, oh, I'm really tired. Ah, one more cake. And and then it's like, oh, I'm pain, you know. Like, and then, like, you have to lie down in bed and, like, crash for three days. And the body was keep telling you, listen, we have to rest. We have to rest. We have to rest. And 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 you get it only when you get that. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> in your system. <laughs> no, and no. and yes and then you say like oh my god why why life experience why i have to learn through like so much pain is because we don't listen yeah. you know listening listening is an amazing gift that we can we can like teach ourselves like and and this is like for me one of the the best tools to really understanding how we get through life because because like our focus is what we manifest Mm-hmm. So uh, if if we put our focus on like more like really listening and perceiving what is really happening through our bodies, you know, and through whatever is happening all around us, like we can connect to this vertical time of, of like of the soul. Mm-hmm. And in this time, like there's more harmony and the life lessons can evolve in a way that that uh, is more round. And, and it is more graceful okay because grace exists everywhere and we can connect to the law of grace through that place where we really listen Mm -hmm. so listen is a practice you know listening when we're talking to a person when we have a conversation to really listen and and to stop and listen to nature and what what is really coming like i like to pay attention to to a lot of things when it comes to like colors and shapes because mm-hmm. as an artist and as a light language teacher with sacred geometry and color it really talks to me so like each person have their own symbols mm-hmm. and like for me when like Stanley's coming here like a, a yellow bird it's like okay yellow is about clarity is about uh being clear ourself how are we healing these doubts how we becoming more clear and it's just like the questions coming like you know through healing through through really understanding that that there's place in a soul system that that needs to like get stronger mm-hmm. and again coming back to the child um there's i have like a lot of techniques that i learned from the, the lineage of the coronaries when it comes to healing some of them really like powerful when you like changing your vibration, the, the frequencies mm. and dimensions like the divine intervention where physical laws cease to exist and they can like drop off, like drop off the, uh, to the physical. That means like tumors in the body can drop off the, the, the body and, mm. and disappear from the body and they manifest into physical form, like certain something. And, and, and it's like, like you can see miracles happen mm-hmm. and basically the attitudes to every person and how to like work with, with, with every human being, with all the complex, it comes from the same space of, of being present or of listening. 
of like really listening to what the moment wants to show you and and like connecting that to that love that every person wants to be loved for me like you know every person who come to me for a healing session i understand that there's like you know a call to like to for for love to come for self love for for acceptance for knowledge of what is really happening and and a willingness to be like to open for for new growth for something for new possibilities you know people when they come to healing they say like okay i don't understand anymore how to heal myself uh like help me open like the right doors there's like a lot of things here i don't i cannot see and, and for me my work as a healer is 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 to help the person find the right possibility the right door door for them mm. because it's not about telling people what to do i think it, like the answers can never come from another person no it has to come from inside if not we don't get it we will keep looking we will keep looking to different healers different psychics uh uh towered cars uh uh classes gurus masters like whatever you know there's so much outside outside and and sure we need to look for that inspiration and we need to look for some higher vibration to give us that that like uh that inspiration mm -hmm. but if we don't get it from inside it it at the end it will not it will not really resonate it will not fall into place and we will keep looking so so my work is really to to hold that space for the person to find their own mastery their mm -hmm. own voice of like that resonant with their soul i mean that's that's the that's the place where they can when they can start exploring what it means to have like what it means to have consciousness because we live in on like conscious and when subconscious is huge and we where our conscious mind is like is like a little bit compared to everything but when we find that fine line of that voice of that inner authentic self uh is easier to explore you know when you get it you you get it like life start uh, pouring into you with so much more inspiration and it looks like magic it looks like miracles it looks like something like wonderful like the the life is like is beautiful because it's wow is is like much more than when we when we thought when we lived on the third dimension in the plane thinking like okay you know we have to wake up like time wake up in the morning get the, the job and do you know eat and everyone have to eat have to go to the bathroom i, I mean that's like part of human experience and and like it's, it's a whole dance between like really our spiritual potential and our temple our vessel our body mm. and for me personally like really respecting my body and taking care of it and and to take care of, the, of that vitality life force of every cell uh, this is really personally it was really my my uh, my work because i'm working like years already exploring so much like spiritual dimensions and and consciousness mm. that it's so easy to forget the body yeah and so like what i do i'm like i'm taking care of my nutrition and and exercise whatever is like whatever is good for me whatever is important whatever nourish my my body I remember my form and and like really appreciate appreciate my divinity with with dance with laughter with making love with like you know everything that is is like uh is physical mm -hmm. and and like this i feel that i can manifest more whatever like the light wants to manifest yeah. into form here on, on the physical so each person have their journey each person is is like is different and is you know and is is uh, a curious exploration to like what's who am i what is my my work and it's not so easy to recommend to people like do ex you know what i do i can explain about like my my life work and and um the thing is like talking about the heart i think is easier because like the heart space is something common for probably for everyone 
that that feeling of wanting to be in love and wants to be happy and and basically that's that's something that is more common while spiritual things physical things are so they're so different uh, yeah. for every person and i do think that um a, a large part of my journey uh recently and that kind of realization that came through the kind of the forgiveness of acceptance work was actually when you said you know being in your flow following what it is that lights you up in that moment following what it is um that you are desiring and allowing that to to be what you give your attention to and like you say you kind of that shift from the mundane yes yes we live in this third dimensional world and there's things that we have to do but kind of reprioritizing our hearts needs and wants and desires um, because so much of our past and so many people's lives is very much kind of like what we feel we should be doing as opposed to kind of tuning in and what is it we we want to be doing and kind of letting that child come out and play more you know bringing joy yeah. into our lives more and and I have yeah. felt when I've done that the more that I've allowed that to take place and you know, say I've got a, a to-do list and I, I have to get on with the work and yet I want to go and walk in the fields and sit in the rocks. Um, I'll go and do that. And then the next day, what gives me joy is actually to do the work that I had to do the other day, but it no longer feels like work because it's now a joyous act because it's what my heart is is wanting to do in that moment. And it's really been about just flowing with whatever's been coming through and like you say you have to be open to to listen to your your heart your body and what their needs are um, and that to me is is being in that connection and being in that flow with the divine our, our super consciousness whatever you want to call it because you know that we came here to embody to be in a body um and and to experience joy and freedom within within this form and so for me that's what it's about regardless of what that gets to look like in the in the different minutes and moments yes and and also connect i mean that connection to that passion that we have from our heart it can give us a key about like directions in our life mm -hmm. because it can be about like uh everyday things that we do like choices uh should I eat that or that? Should I go to work or go to meditate? Should I play or should I, you know, yeah. I work on myself and, and or, or like bigger life experiences of like, you know, career changes, relationships, uh, uh, big path, like journeys, like all this is like when you train yourself to really listen to, to this passion you have in your heart, it becomes easier to understand like which direction to take yeah. because it's like, you know, this is what I said, like do what makes you happy, you know, basically like it looks like we have, like we, we working for someone else. We have to like doing whatever it is because our parents or the society or the government or whatever, like we keep, we keep doing things for the system or for other people and we forget to listen to what makes us happy where what makes us happy is normally exactly that place where we connect to the soul and to what 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 is our next step in our evolution yeah and it's not i'm not talking about superficial things about like oh you know i want to just like sit in a hammock all day and like smoke a joint and like oh this is what makes me happy because like there's there's a way also to understand how we are we are escaping our responsibilities. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, it, it's it's complex. It's complex. The the I would say like you know follow your heart, follow your joy, your happiness, and and know that the word like responsibility that can come with like joyful responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it it makes it easier because I know a lot of rebels that have you know, great responsibilities and they're just like ah. You know they don't want to go there because it's it sounds like a big serious word and when i connect joyful responsibility I understand that this is why why i'm here and on this earth and this in this body in in my service and 
And, you know, if uh, spirit tell me sit and write, because there's some text that can inspire many people, mm. just like, just like sit and do it, you know, even if like you say, oh, but what makes me happy is like go to play now, you know, <laughs> or like go to the swimming pool with my daughter or whatever. So it's like, uh, like, it's really like, listening is an art and is is a everyday things because there's always some kind of challenges you know mm. the mind likes to like give us more challenges we like to give ourselves challenges and 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 there's many patterns that we're not uh conscious about that even when we broke few and we become more free there's still mm. more layers yeah. and still more layers still more layers and and you know what there will always be some layers. Thank God, because that's that's why we like to explore life. And if not, it's just like, okay, you got the map, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Let's just like fly happy and free and that's it. it it's, it's, for some reason, it doesn't work like that. It's, you know, that's, uh, we have to come back to the moment, to that space where where we know that inner peace and to know where, where to go from there. And to respect that some, some things are more challenging and some some things are are less and i naturally like like more uh, shortcuts you know i I'm, I'm using like light language sacred geometry and color tools writing grids because i understand how to like work with energy so everything around us is energy everything everything is energy so like when you understand the codes of consciousness you can go and rewrite codes and, and accelerate healing and accelerate purification processes, bring new insight, new inspiration, and new qualities in yourself. Mm. You know, some people say, like, I was shy my whole life, and I know I need to teach, but I cannot open my mouth. So, like, what I do, I, I'm working on their throat chakra, and I bring new qualities of leadership, of, of flowing communication, and that these qualities exist. It's just like, okay, let's... Let's attract it to this body. Let's let's uh, weave it in their auric field. And when I do that, like something starts changing. Like sometimes you then you talk without thinking about it, and it never happened before, you know, for, yeah. for some people. So like this is this is like part of the work that I like to do, and 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 also working with um, a lot of people coming for me for relationships. So like again, I'm I'm going for like traditional way kind of. Freud to understand our oh, parents, how was the parents relationship? We copy and paste, you know, we keep copy and paste. So this is like in like kind of new old psychology. And then I'm using um ancient tools like from the Mayans, like light language, like deep healing work with frequencies and dimensions to help the person really shift so they can they can be like uh quicker in the place they really need to be so they can evolve and not be stuck in the same old patterns that we keep copy and pasting from our parents it's not our parents fault they copy and paste from their parents and then i mean we keep just doing it that humanity uh, evolve in a way pretty slowly because we just keep repeating similar patterns and in this era a lot of people waking up and understand that that we're not victims and we can make changes so that's 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 pretty empowering and there's like a lot of people like that i know that actually take their life in their hands and they say okay i mean i understand i have these patterns i don't blame my parents anymore because that's i chose my parents i chose these patterns but i'm working on consciousness bringing more light of consciousness this is like the best tools to actually heal and to, to shift and then you bring that light and something else change and and then I come with like I, you know what when I when I learned when I met this lineage something starts shifting really really quickly in my life I I did like soul retrieval course and from there I start discovering night school and that I can study uh, when I go to sleep I meet my teacher and, and start and, and 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 about like the whole uh, realm that when I'm sleeping, I thought it's only dreams, and and really to understand that part of my dreams is is, is reality, is mm -hmm. another reality, mm -hmm. and um, 
from there, like when I studied the, when I heard about light language, I think because I'm an artist, because color and shape is and symbolism is really something that close to my heart. Mm. I knew I, I want to study this. So like when I got these teachings, <clears throat> I felt like I won the lottery, you know? <laughs> I felt like I have so much magic and I can do anything that I want. And like, I'm rich with these teachings. I'm I like, I got life by the balls, you know? I was like, ah, that's like a lot of power. And with this power, I have more responsibility because whatever you think, suddenly things start happening. I mean, it does for everyone, but then you realize it in a, in a deeper level. And you have more responsibility to to your thoughts, to your words. I really pay attention to my words. I I I careful a lot to use anything like negative because I know it's it creates like creates down here. It has a lot of power of mm -hmm. negative. Yes. So why I want to use this power? You know why I want to use this power for negative? So. Like you start, like consciousness actually changed my vocabulary. I switched a lot of words and um, and I, I find way to, to talk in, in that is different and is not so much judgmental or, or negative and understanding that like, like the tools that I got, um, you know, like really can transform myself and other people. And when I realize it, I wanted to teach it so it can like really expand more, get more people get that this knowledge and, and work on themselves. Because like when you get these tools, you can like, you can start looking at yourself. So, okay, um, I noticed that my self-esteem is not so good. I'm not choosing the right relationships, keep keeping like my choosing the wrong, like, uh, uh, examples or you know wrong boyfriend wrong whatever and um and then like how how do i do to have like better self-esteem and then <clears throat> i have the tools i have light i have colors and i, I mix them together and i create i put in my auric field and like <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me and life start transforming life start bringing me new different experiences so i I experience more self-esteem. Mm. So um, <clears throat> this is part of like the 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 goal that I feel that I have is is light language and and <clears throat> after that I felt like I need to really find a way to to get deeper into the teaching of the lineage of the Coronaderos of Mexico. So I learned more about dimensions, many healing techniques, and and uh yeah it's a fascinating journey and i'm i'm happy to i'm happy to share just a little bit from it uh with you with with your um with your people i mean yeah. i think i think that's the wonderful thing at this time isn't it it's um so many more people are starting to kind of wake up to the fact that they are so much more than their roles their physical body this that and the other and they're starting to have more of an awareness of the patterns that are running through their life that they may not be so happy with and want to change and something like this this forum just opens up so much more wisdom or um you know kind of gems of of knowledge that will will unlock or trigger that healing journey and enable somebody to then do the work on themselves. I mean, for me, it really is about us all doing the work on ourselves and then sharing that in whatever way, shape or form that gets to look. We don't all have to be healing teachers and spiritual teachers. It's just about, you know, like you say, having that responsibility about what we put out into the field around us, you know, our thoughts, our words, because they hold so much power. And when we understand that uh, and we're able to become conscious about the patterns that are unfolding in our lives, we get to then make choices. It's, it's no longer a habit to think in this particular way, to behave in this particular way. It's something that we're consciously aware of and we get to choose and change something different. And just in us doing that, people seeing that within us will then have that knock-on effect for them. You know, when they see kind of change happening in our lives because we're making changes. I do believe very strongly, you know, the change we want to see in the world, it starts with us. We, we have to be that change. We have to, to do those steps. And I also believe very strongly that our highest aspects of self will bring those perfect people 
wisdom, however that gets looked, whether it's a book, whether it's something like this, whether it's connecting with a particular teacher or healer, they'll bring that into our awareness so that we can then go down that fractal of our journey to expand more and more of our knowledge and awareness. So it, it's beautiful how you've kind of described your your journey um, in, in that kind of very flowing way and, and then, you know, connecting very much with a particular aspect and expanding more into that. And then that took you on to another place and you expanded more into that. I do really love the fact that you work with light language in a very visual way because a lot of people connect light language with the auditory you know people speaking mm -hmm. light language but the fact that you work mm -hmm. in such a visual way with it and you kind of Im Im imbibe your your artwork with it is is something that really drew me to your work as well oh I don't know if you've just lost internet connection oh there you're back again <laughs> yeah can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Um, so, I mean, if we just kind of maybe speak a little bit about how you imbibe your light language into your art and then we'll probably bring the conversation to a close because of the internet being a bit yes, um, yes. jumpy now. Let's do yeah. that. Let's do that because I'm, I'm sharing a, a gift with, with the people who's listening that is an art that infused with a sacred geometry and color and that with a specific energy that whoever watch the the painting will like increase their self love so there's a grid of self love that i'm i'm like weaving or downloading to the to the image and uh, the way I'm working with light language is energetically. So I can work and, and put it on an auric field of a person or on an auric field of an image. Mm -hmm. Is uh, and and or place or like you know community or group of people. So uh, it's not that it's not so much that it's visual. It's really energetic. Mm -hmm. But when I draw it, I draw it with like shapes and colors, but basically it, it, it's the energy because mm -hmm. I can work with light language and I work with light language all the time, just synergetically, just emanating for my auric field. And, um, and in this specific uh, painting, people like when, when look at it, will like something will open like for new growth in, in, their, in their system. Mm -hmm. In for new growth that is more about like self-love, self-respect, about really feeling comfortable in your own body, in your own self. And, and like, you know, it brings more grounding perspective of yourself. So um, so it, for some people it, it will bring more healing, for some people more inspiration, each person on their own level. Yeah. And, and that's, that's about this uh, specific uh, gift. And... Um, yeah so um yeah i know i know light language has like many many connotations this is like the light language really of, of consciousness of energy mm -hmm. so even sound like there's a way to construct like a specific uh light grids on sound so it will send a certain message mm -hmm. so um so it's not only about visual the fact that i'm visual i'm using paintings in 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 my in my work is not like all the only aspects of, of light language but um we can probably talk in another <laughs> another place in, in like more about light language and um yeah a lot of respect to that and yeah that's 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 gold basically like gold gold is like god if you take l out of it it's like god you got divine coming into you in, in a certain form that you can um you can use and you practice mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i don't know how long the internet service will be still like available here because we are in in the forest and um a little bit green the color of green is good for healing for new growth for balance mm -hmm. <laughs> So just here some green inspiration. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, I love where you are. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes. yes, it's a beautiful forest beside Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we have a center here where we hold like ceremonies and uh, I'm teaching light language and my husband's teaching music and there's like, uh, mm -hmm. I'm teaching here the divine intervention with a lot of like that major healing work. Uh, if we can have like a, a space for like a, a, a quick uh, promo, I will say that I'm, I'm in October 12 to 27, 2019, I'm teaching here uh, two weeks of divine intervention with like about 30 healing techniques and that major initiation to the lineage and to dimensions and frequency to help spontaneous remission of diseases and to help like consciousness and deep, deep, deep healing and, and the way to mastery. So this is going to be here in, in the center in Brazil. Wow, fabulous. So, yeah. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds amazing thank you i'll have to uh yeah thank you what my calendar's like which <laughs> <laughs> so what are the dates again october the 12th to october 12th to 27th okay. 2019 okay fabulous yeah. excellent yeah yes. whoever wants information just yeah contact in my email i have like a i have a whole kit of information Brilliant. I'll um I'll make sure that the uh, contact details and your web page is all on the um, email that goes out with the video as well. So anybody who feels drawn to uh, working with Karen or in any way, um, uh, but uh, but in particular on on this this training that she's holding in October sounds absolutely fantastic. Sounds wonderful, really. Um, so we'll we'll wrap the the conversation up there because we have been speaking for about an hour and I know your internet connection is is starting to um, have a bit of a wobble. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for joining me and the audience today. It's been absolutely fantastic connecting with you again, um, and I've really enjoyed our conversation. And I do think that it's one of the the key essential points of anybody's kind of personal and spiritual evolution is to really connect with themselves and uh to fully accept and love themselves so it was it was a perfect discussion for this day the 14th of um, february but it's perfect for anybody at any time thank you thank you and thank you to thank to the audience that uh stayed until here and listened and uh, i wish for you and for the audience uh, beautiful beautiful uh, year beautiful life of growth new growth inspiration and and good graceful life experiences thank you for inviting me it was my pleasure absolute pleasure and honor thank you very much for joining us so um thanks to to karen Orr and for the audience um we are in the the last week of the um nope we're not Oh, I can't remember where we are actually. Anyway, you shall be receiving another wonderful interview tomorrow in your in your mailbox. Um, and I look forward to spending time with you then. So take care. Goodbye. <laughs>